the codependency comes in because at a very deep level the deceived mind is looking for completion in that other person and it can't succeed it's the whole thing is set up from the word go it can't succeed in that extent because it can seem to succeed for certain periods of time that's what's so sneaky about it where you seem to have it all you know according to the world standards you seem to have this, a good career you seem to have the a loving spouse and everything that you, you think you've ever wanted and everything and all of a sudden you have hit these periods where you feel like life is meaningless and, and the wheels are falling off and wait a minute I just had I just had it you all had everything and now yeah. I have nothing and it's like it's a, there's that mirage again you have a mirage of, of having everything but in a way it's like the ego is saying in there you know it's a cruel vicious world never mind that it's, it's just a world and I just see I just perceive exactly what I think I want to find, whatever I selectively choose in the world, which is the fact of it. But the ego says it's a cruel, vicious world out there. People are out to get you. You know, the government and the IRS and you've got people that are always treating you bad at work or here or there. And if you can find a haven, if you can just find that one person, if it's just one person or, or a couple people that, that you know, you can always talk to and it won't beat you up and it won't attack you and everything, then build your home, build your security on that relationship with that other person. And so you, so it's like we have our, our basket and our emotional eggs, and we start saying, this is it. This is the haven that will do it. And we go click, clink, clink, and we start putting our investments and everything on, on the life we're going to live together and, and how it's going to be. We keep loading them in and building this up and everything. And then invariably, they seem to leave, they seem to die, they seem to get sick, they seem to be going through trauma, and we're so emotionally invested and codependent with them that we seem to go down the cesspool with them. And it's because, in the ultimate sense, it's been set up from the beginning, that they've, they've been set up as a God substitute. And there is no body ever that will serve as a, as a, as a God substitute. It's set up for the basket to drop. The ego has yeah, set the thing up. up. Yeah. Now, the Holy Spirit says, okay, this is where you think you are, and they seem to be set up destructively, but, but I can bring a touch of heaven to them. I can bring a purpose so that you can bring a, that purpose that we've been talking about to that relationship. Mm -hmm. You can literally turn the, the relationship over to the Holy Spirit and say, I don't know where this is going to go, but I know I want this to be for the greater good. I want this to be for me waking up. And I have used this relationship. I have investments. I really have had this. I wanted this person to come out this way to make something more of themselves. I wanted to fix them. I thought I could change them. Da 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 da. da. I'm gonna I'm gonna give all that to you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> I want you to help me unlearn the strings that I've attached to this relationship. The way I, I've wanted to use them to meet my needs, you know, and to build me up because I felt unworthy. I've used them as a crutch. You know, it's like idol worship, or like even with people with heroes and stars. You know, I'll attach my identity to this person or this ball player. When I was a kid, I grew up with all these heroes and idols, you know, and it's like, made me feel better just knowing that I was attaching my, myself to this other idol or whatever. And it's, it's like a quick fix. It's, it doesn't last. The idol, the heroes seem to be letting us down, but <laughs> it's just our own perception that's, that's mixed up. So, in my life, you know, I did mention the last time that I was involved with a woman for three years in a relationship, and it was just the most painful, it was like the most emotional roller coaster ride that I've ever been on, but it was very good for my growth and for teaching me where I had the investment. And it really can seem like a very fast ride, and it can seem like a real accelerated undoing of the false beliefs when you hang into a relationship and you give it over to the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of that repressed false ideas and beliefs that the mind hasn't wanted to look at start to come up. Well, that's, yeah, that's what, I mean, like, I guess part of it is, like, the, the purpose of them, um, you know, what, you know, um, you know, that's the thing that was, that was interesting that I was reading it now. It's like, um, you know, you put up against the, the thing that irritates you the most. Um, 
you know, when you both are put up against each other, the irritating each other just as much. You know? mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just this, all this stuff behind that, I mean, is that basically what, you know, our, our special relationships, our closeness is, you know, with spouses or, or family or whatever Parents? is? I mean, that's, that's really all that they really are. Yeah. It accelerates that whole bringing to the light. Mm-hmm. of the, the beliefs that we don't even know we have. Mm-hmm. No, we certainly you know, don't want to look at. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, and but the fact that they're special makes you possibly take more of a look at it. I think so. Because so. if it wasn't, it could be someone that you just blow them off. Blow you know? them off. But yeah. because, I think they have a real you know, charge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when, because yeah. it's something where you're, you have a tremendous amount of, of care and so on. And, um, then you're willing to sort of hang in there more and take a look more. Yeah, at it. and like you're reading Return to Love, you know, Marianne has a great way of putting it that we're, she says, we're all coming here to learn how to love. And mm-hmm. and that's uh, an interesting thing to think about it because, once again, the mind, the seed mind, thinks it knows what tables and chairs are and also it thinks it knows what love is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's read books and it's seen movies and it's had experiences and it's, and it's, it's a very humbling fact when, when you, you come to say that there are different kinds of love. I mean, that's in the special relationship sections too, that, that there seems to be in this world a brother and sister love and a love for the parents and a, and a romantic love and a da-da-da-da-da. There seems to be a pretty good scale of love, puppy love, love for your pet, and on and on and on. And, and basically the teaching of the Course is love is one, and, and love can only look on itself. And that you, you don't know in a deceased state of mind, you don't know what love is. So, in, to use Marianne's phrase, learning how to love, or to use Jesus' phrase, learning how to, to become aware of the obstacles to the to love's presence that, that, are, that I've constructed in my mind. That's that's the process of doing it. And to the ego, it's like, why do I? The ego would say, why do I have these people in my life? Why do I keep attracting <laughs> these people to my life? They're you know just such pains to me. <laughs> and to the Holy Spirit, you know, it's like. Hey, golden opportunity here to really look at something that you can't stand to look at with your own mind, so you're projecting it out and you're seeing it in the other person. I can kind of give you the metaphysics of what goes on behind that, and and, and that is that I mean some people we talk about where you'll see something and you'll see this person that is absolutely we'll say sloppy, just sloppy, 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 just seems <laughs> uncaring, just lay things around, just completely sloppy. And then people have said, now that's a mirror, right? And I'm seeing in them what's in me. I'm not sloppy. <laughs> this is not more, forget you what Jesus says. I'm, I'm neat and orderly, and this person's sloppy, and it's driving me nuts. And really what it is, is the, is the idea or the concept of sloppiness is, is once again a meaning. They're, these are just images on the screen, and, and the mind interprets the behavior as sloppy. In other words, sloppy is a concept that's in the mind, just like neat. So the mind has determined what the form looks like to be labeled sloppy, right. is what you're saying. It's made a judgment. Or what the form has to look like to be labeled orderly and neat yeah. and organized. Right. But and it's just something the mind decides upon. It's right. It's an arbitrary decision. It's, it's an ego judgment. And, of course, when we have sloppy and neat and everything, divine order is, of course, obscured. <laughs> How can there be fusion or divine order when things could be better? In other words, it's not so much that it's sloppy, but sloppy is not good. <laughs> there's, a, there's that connotation to it, you know. Neat would be better. So, in that sense, this is just bringing up an opportunity to look at my investment, perhaps that in the order of things, as opposed to the Christ. That when I'm upset at you because you're sloppy or whatever, it's just like, I would rather hang on to the ordering in my way I think the world should be and everything, then to to see the Christ in you. It doesn't mean that you don't, you don't communicate about it. You know, there, there certainly is a certain amount of efficacy and efficiency to cert- some organizations. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's like don't let the form obscure the content. When Helen dictated the, the, uh, the course, or Jesus dictated the course, she was very much into writing and, and 
things need to be a certain way and so on and so forth, like you, you've mentioned. And she had, she went nuts about, she was looking for consistency and form. And Jesus was always trying to come at the content. And I think part of the reason that he, he didn't put so much an emphasis on consistency here and there was that it was like, go for the content. Go for the change of your perception in your mind. Don't try to demand that to be consistent in form. Because she was looking for punctuation errors, as we've mentioned, and, you know, grammatical stuff. And really, that was more of her unconscious resistance to his love being projected out in the form of, you could do this better. <laughs> you could do this better. So anytime I perceive something, and I notice a rise inside of me, it may not mean that what I'm seeing out there is in behavior or form, it is my behavior or form, but it does mean that what I see out there in behavior and form I have some judgment about, and I have some concept or belief in my mind about that. And, and that's, the, that's the gift, you know, that's the, the, the wonderful thing about noticing it, it's like, oh, and that, you know, it's like, that's another one for me to look at. What you're saying then is, the whole point is to remove the judgment. Mm -hmm. So that, or I visit a friend of mine, for example, who has their house totally destroyed, you know, you have to just pick your way through. Mm -hmm. I have to reach a place where it doesn't bother me when I visit, and that it's perfectly fine that I have to step through the clothes and books. <laughs> I won't make it. <laughs> you have already you're valuing being with that person more than being in an orderly environment. Otherwise, yeah. you wouldn't go I see her. Really need person. Love the person. Yeah, love the person. Yeah. I have a lot of problems with the behavior. And there are some, like my brother and my mother have similar kinds of behavior that are real difficult to accept. Well, I don't accept it, and. Um, I've always had a problem with this concept of, well, what you see in somebody else is, is what you are, the way you are. But now you're, 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 My brother's going to go to the mountains of Den in Denver somewhere, and he's going to build a ski lodge, and, all, you know, my brother doesn't have $5 in his pocket. Oh, he's a dreamer, you know, and, and there's, no, there's no way, I mean, that any of that will ever happen, and he's now on his third divorce and he's got two children and he's got to try you know it it just goes on and on i mean the way his life is it's all uh, fragmented and troubled and and all this stuff and uh, it's just really hard to stand by and, and you know, wish this person had more order in their life and you wish that, that you could see them being at a, in a better place you know and more at peace and have things work for them and he's He's forever getting himself into another bad marriage and another bad situation, and you know it's just very tough to stand by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the you hit the keyword wish too, wish. Yeah. because that's that's it. The ego is a wish. The ego is not nothing more than a wish. Yeah, I mean, I feel and I feel sorry for him too. I think the poor guy. You know, can he can he get a? I mean, why couldn't this third marriage work? You know, you know what? Here's these two little dear children and. And why can't they have this finally something work for them, you know? And uh, that's so, blowing apart, you know, too. That's your brother out there. And then, then you think, now, wait a minute. Now, what is my lesson in this? Or if I'm yeah, trying to I, heal my mind, how do I bring that back? Or what interpretation am I making? And really, beneath it all is the wish that things would be different than they are. Yes, I mean, exactly. And, and, and <laughs> the deeper you go into this, it's like it sure. comes up in so many different forms, whether it's relationships or you know, things around exactly. from homes or houses or everything. Right. And the mind has this very deep rooted wish that things be different than they are. The judgment that things are not the way they, they should, should be. be. Mm -hmm. exactly. Things are askew. Mm -hmm. no. Expectation is the word we use a lot. Right. You know, that's I mean, expectation. Sure. And, this, and my sister is at a place in her marriage where I cannot believe this. As long as they've been married, it doesn't look like it's the, they're going to stay together. So the askew out and there. And it's like, my goodness, you know, I, I, I can expect my brother to do this, but for my sister, who's a real down-to-earth, responsible, sensible person, and, and um, she hasn't been able to have a child, and it's just kind of made her crazy. And she, so her husband hasn't been sensitive to this, and, you know, now she wants to leave him, and, and uh, 
just change your whole